everyone. It's me, Isa. And today's video, I want to talk about the power of community. And this particular video is, uh, is not only um, centered around those that are grieving, um, that's on their bereavement journey, is for anyone who knows of someone who is on it on this journey, bereavement journey, grief journey. And those and for those that don't know exactly what to say um to someone who's going through bereavement, okay? They don't know what to do. And the reason I bring up those two elements, I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do. I cannot tell you how many, like, the, oh my goodness, the countless times I've heard people say, I just didn't know what to say to you. I didn't know what to do, you know. Outside of saying, offering you, I'm sorry, condolences, I just did not know what to say to you. So this video is to help those that want to engage someone that is in the process of healing, all right? So let's just say that healing, because the importance of community um, is, is widespread. But for the purpose of this channel, I want to really bring in those that want to assist someone that is grieving or on the you know the bereavement journey and for those of us that are on this bereavement journey for us to know that community is important and to also know that um where community uh begins and where it uh ends um and that's situational all right when i say end because community is really a 24 7 or it should be mindset all right but because it's situational i say it ends because when we're bereaved when we're grieving so a lot of times i hear a lot of um widows and widowers uh say well people just abandon me after two weeks you know and the thing is so people have to get back to their lives okay so know where community can end in certain situations okay and that is okay you follow me? So let's begin. So, welcome. Get do my formal welcome to As Told by a Widow. My name is Isa. You guys know that. So, community. I am going to use myself as an example, as always, <laughs> because I once again want to use my bereavement and grief journey. Um, uh, to help you all make some decisions based off of me doing things wrong, terribly wrong, and doing some really amazing and beautiful things right. Okay, so let's get started. Community. When my husband passed away, it was set. I was uh, about 30, 31 weeks pregnant. Um, and of course, you guys know that um, they couldn't get my blood pressure down. So I was, um, they had it induced. So I had to deliver my son early. Um, so the for about three weeks, my son was three, four weeks. My son was in the neonatal ICU. 
and trying to, first of all, deal with the sudden death of my husband. Because remember now, I created this mental out, this imaginary situation, um, because I couldn't, I didn't, my heart and my mind couldn't um, accept what was going on in my reality. So my mind and my body developed a, um, a mental and emotional out through this you have to watch the video for you guys. Um, I'm trying to stay focused on community. But I did. I created a mental out. And that wasn't healthy, you know. Because that mental imagery that I created never came to pass. So that added to my heartache. So while all this is going on, I have... And now become a widow with four children and I was trying to process my grief um, dealing with you know of course financial uh, paperwork and things like that managing my children's grief because like I tell you time didn't stop um, I had to make arrangements for my children's schools um, so they could get a little bit, you know, more time um, with the family. Uh, and, of course, myself, I was on maternity and uh, bereavement leave. So managing all of this, making sure all the paperwork was where it needed to be. And somewhere in there, I had to figure out when to, to eat. I remember once. Now, I, would, I knew to cook for my children. Because that was a role that I had, you know, I, I enjoyed prior to my husband transitioning. And I had compassion for my children. So, I would, you know, I didn't go without cooking for them. Providing for them in, in any way whatsoever you know but I failed to identify my pain my needs and my wants and I remember um, my mother um, stopped by and she said what did you eat today and I was like oh I had this is me I was I was literally trying to figure out what I had eaten. I was like, hmm, I don't recall eating there. I didn't eat here. I almost had gone almost 24 hours without any, eating any solid food. I knew I, I, um, I, I've always, I'm a tea drinker. So I said, well, I had some tea, but I could not recall actually eating anything solid. So I wasn't eating, but I was gaining weight. So when that came to mind, um, I began to stay focused on eating. Not nutrition, but just eating, right? Because I was in this mindset of, I just got to get through the moment. And eating is an important step. What I was eating, I honestly... I went from eating nutritional uh, dinners prior to my hub, husband passing away to, you know, whatever I can put together. And it had got to the point where once my son was home, I only had enough energy to really prepare dinner for the children and uh, get them situated at home and crawl in my bed. I was so exhausted on so many levels, you all. So that's when the weight gain began. And I remember 
my um, job uh, calling me. And they said, well, hey, we would like to, you know, give her a baby shower. And I wasn't in the mood for it. I wasn't. And um, so one of my coworkers called and we talked. And she said, that's fine. She, um, it's just that everyone wants to celebrate the birth of your son. And we want you to know that we care and that we're thinking about you. I said, okay. I said, but I don't want a party party. I just want to come get my things, the gifts, and I just want to leave and go back. So she agreed to make sure she, it stayed as simple and as possible. You all, I went with, I picked my youngest daughter, who was like in the third grade at the time. And... Um, we went to my job. Now, in my area, if, if I know the area in which I work, there was only like five of us. So I walked into, they used the conference room for the floor. When I walked in, you all, there were, oh my goodness, I'm glad I took my SUV. I mean, literally, an entire wall filled with gifts for my son. Stacks and stacks of cards of condolences and uh, celebratory uh, cards for the birth of my son. And I was like, hold on. And, and, and even in my grief and what I call foggy burn, I was like, there's not even enough people on this floor to have done all of this. And all of these cars, where did these come from? You know? And this is what community comes in. My coworkers, my immediate coworkers, they were there to uh, welcome me and give me an embrace and uh, words of encouragement. Uh, we prayed together. Um, as she said, we sent out a mass email just letting people know that what your, your situation she was like we didn't get them any strong details and it just the gifts they said were just flowing in I you know and I was like wow and you never really know who noticed you okay until something happens, you know? <laughs> so that's why it's always good to be your best version for you because you never know who's watching you. I, I remember, I want to say it was around October of last year that I pulled the, the box out and I had like all these cards and I read about, I think about 20 of them. I, it was just randomly... So check that video out. And I was like, this is amazing. These people do not know me. But yet they felt some sense of community, you know, not responsibility, because that's a difference. Because they did not have to contribute to, you know, the, the baby shower. You know, but that sense of, I guess, empathy for someone else's situation, you know, touched so many people on many, many floors and departments. You follow me? So that's another example of how important community is because. 10 years later, I'm still reading those cards. The, the, some with the uh, bereavement cards. And some people would write in, you know, a couple of, of lines of encouragement. 
I'm still reading those. They're still feeding me spiritually and emotionally. And I thank God for them. And I ask that the universe will bless them continuously. Because whether they know about or have experienced, I should say, the loss of a spouse or a loved one, they felt some sense of community, empathy for my situation, and they chose. See, that's the thing with community. It's a choice to extend kindness my way, to bring themselves vicariously into my life through their contribution through a card, through a gift, through not just giving me a card, jotting down a couple of sentences and putting it on a piece of paper in a card. Words of encouragement. Because I got a lot of those too. So that's one beautiful example of community. Okay? Another example of community. Back to what I spoke about early in this video. How a lot of um, people that are, I mean, yeah, people that are mourning, widows, widowers, children, friends, parents, we get upset and angry when we feel like people have abandoned us in our time of need. And that's not fair. Even if they're able to contribute one, two, three, or a couple of days, or just an email to you. Okay. That's a blessing. Okay. And we have to acknowledge that and celebrate that. All right. And case in point, once again, using myself. And sure enough, after about three weeks, um, actually, my little brother um, moved, stayed with me for about two weeks. And I actually just sent him home. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's time for you to go back home. <laughs> All right. So I appreciate you being here, but uh, bro, it's time for you to go. <laughs> You know, I love him. Well, I love my baby uh, brother. Uh, not baby brother. My little brother passed away in 2020. So, he was an amazing human being, too. So, I sent him home. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that later. But one of the examples, like I said, when my husband passed away, um, within an instant, I was now a widow with four children. Really, at now that I think about it, four stages of life. My eldest daughter was a freshman in high school. The baby girl was in elementary. My oldest son was like daycare, like he was three. And then the my baby, the newborn. So literally, I was going to three places every morning. Yes, because I had, you know, the baby with me. And in the afternoon, I would do the same thing, Monday through Friday. I be, and I'm glad I told the story about the gifts from work. One of my dear friends, the one that found um, a bereavement group for my children within like the first 30 days of my children, I mean, my husband transitioning. Um, she came by and... Um, she just wanted to sit with me. She was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm, I just want to get some sleep. The baby just, he just won't go to sleep just like that. And she said, well, I have a doctor's appointment. She was like, I'm not, you know, I, I cleared my calendar for today. And like I said, this was probably about two months after my husband transitioning. And she comes by. 
And I was just like, I'm really not up for any conversation, you know. She said, like, I didn't come by here to, to talk to you. Give me the baby. And she said, you know, she just said that I'm here to do let you sleep, let you get some peace, some rest. And I looked at her. And I was like, Luanda. Her name was Luanda. And I, I'm sorry, y'all. Because I can still feel it. So that's why I tell you guys, when you go back, make sure you have an accountability partner, you know, and you're on the roll of healthy healing. Because a lot of times you can trigger those emotions again. And I can still recall how I felt. And I just looked at her like, thank you. I need to, I was sleeping, you all, but I was not resting. And, um, so I gave her the baby and I looked in the kitchen. I was so embarrassed, you guys. I had bottles and this is so not like me, right? I had bottles just sitting on the counter. I mean, like five or six of them where I just had water sitting in them, just soaking them, you know? And all I had to do was just put them in the dishwasher. I just, it was, I think it was like five of them, you know? And I said, well, since she said that, I mean, let me go ahead and, and clean the kitchen up. You know, I can at least do that. And she said, no, she said, I got this. And she said, just go lay down. I was like, well, you need to know. She was like, I'll find it. She said, just tell me where his formula is. And if you don't mind, bring um, his baby bag up front and, um, you know, cause she, she had three children of her own. She, she had one at, uh, Notre Dame and one at Howard <laughs> and a, a baby. And I think, well, she wasn't a baby. Her youngest daughter was like, I can't recall what, what grade she was in. So she was familiar with children, you know? So... I did, and I, I remember I showered for the first time. I actually bathed. And I said that I, I was going without good hygiene because I knew the importance of doing that because I had uber-sensitive um, parents that would have noticed and would have just made my life uh, annoying <laughs> or made some presumptuous... Uh, um, situations for me, you know, but it was like, I actually enjoyed the shower. I kid you guys, I slept so good. It was so sweet. So when I got up and my kitchen was so clean, all the bottles were clean and she had done laundry. I was like, when did, when did you have time to do all that? Was I asleep that long? She was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. And um, I said, well, let me hurry put my clothes on so I go pick the children up. She said, no, I'll go pick everybody up. Just call the daycare and make sure it's okay if I pick up um, the bait. Um, you know, my oldest son. So I did. And she she had already taken out um, some food for to cook for that night. And I saw it, you know, defrosting. And I was just like, today is a good day. Was she able to do this every day or once a week? No. Okay, but that day was beautiful, you all. Okay, we're not blood relatives. She's not my neighbor. She's my friend. And even if you can't see your friends every day, because life goes on. And it's supposed to. And although you're, when you're fresh in your grief, you, you do not see clearly you know 
So that's why I want to focus on community where it begins. And for widows and widowers and those that are grieving, in situations, it ends, okay? And that's okay. You celebrate what people or community can contribute genuinely. Because you don't want people uh, contributing to you uh, out of responsibility, okay? Although, you know, you'll take it however you can get it, but at, for the most part, you want a feeling of contribution to community um, toward you and your family coming from a place of empathy, genuine, genuineness, um, kindness, love, friendship, you know? So I appreciate my friend making a decision because she could have said, well, this is my only day off. I have things, other things that I could be doing by resting myself. But she didn't. She dedicated that day to come help me. And I mean, I, I want to say it was like two to three months later. And I was like, thank you. Salawanda. Thank you again. <laughs> She's still to this day. It <laughs> helps. So, the power of community is deep. It is beautiful. And for those that say, well, well not say, but for those that has not experienced the loss of a loved one. And you have this uh, anxiety, I'll call it, about approaching someone that's dealing with grief. And that's when the questions kick in um, or the statement, I just don't know what to say, so I stayed away. I didn't know what to do, so I did nothing. And now that I think about it, that's unfortunate. Because a lot of times, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to actually physically be there in person. You can send an email. You can mail a card. Okay? You can... You know, if you have extra, you know, funding, send a gift card, especially to the widows and widowers um, with children, groceries. And nowadays, there's no excuse. You can order groceries and literally, if you have an address, and have it delivered to their home. You know? Or when it's time for school to start, send a gift card. If not, once again, technology. Order some school supplies and have it delivered to their home. You know? So, the statement of, I don't know what to say or I don't know what to do. That doesn't cut it when if you want to be a part of a community. A Community uh, generated and motivated by kindness, um, friendship, love, you know, and not out of responsibility. Okay. So when you feel like you don't know what to say, guess what? Just send an email. Um, ask someone that is familiar with um, those that the one that is grieving that you would like to reach out to. Say, hey, if I want to send something to this particular person, um, do you have their contact information? Okay. And, um, you, can, you know, do it that way. Nowadays, it's so easy to get in contact with people through social media. And so, be real with yourself. Either you do want to assist someone out of kindness or you want or you don't 
or you do not. And either way, it's okay. But, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> this video is about community. And then assisting those that want to contribute in some way to those that are grieving. Build and be a part of the community. I mean, a lot of times, those that are on the grief journey, there are doctor bills. You know, as, um, you know, how can I pay, help you with this bill? You know? So, it is so much you can do. And I'm not just talking about finances. I had a neighbor that would just come by and just cut my grass. Mm -hmm. Which is something my husband always did. So when my neighbor came outside, I can hear the lawnmower. He would just cut my grass. Did he do it every time he cut his grass? No. But when he did, I was grateful and I was thankful. That was one less thing that I had to plan for or get out there and figure out for myself to do. So community on this grief journey, on this bereavement journey, is imperative. And it assists in the healing and stability of those that are going through bereavement. Even if you, you, you can't contribute financially or, um, or physically, like cut the grass, you know, be a part of their, their daily living, you can pray for them. I can tell you, I literally felt the prayers of other people because they had so much energy directed toward me. I could feel it. When I say people prayed me through, a lot during this time, they did. Okay? So you energetically give to them. Do you understand? I hope I'm making my point. So when you say, I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do, I really just not say anything. <laughs> just... Just say, you know, your basic condolences. Oh, my condolences on your loss. And keep it pushing. And because that's just as good. All right. And if you're uncomfortable with saying that, that's fine. Don't don't say anything. All right. <laughs> Community on this journey, you all, is good. And I will say to those that are breathing, uh, learn to accept. The kindness of community because I know during our pain we shut down and we'll go shut ourselves in isolate ourselves so don't shut yourself off to community um, if you want to set some boundaries you can there's nothing wrong with that but during this time you're gonna need that assistance okay and also, it just done on me. It, it, uh, you know, you can also share, you know, those that are in the community, share with uh, those that are grieving words of wisdom, resources. Like I said, my friend Lawanda went online and found a youth bereavement group for my children. Free, that is free of charge. I didn't have the, it, although I knew my children was going to need some type of professional support. I was just so much into my grief and just wanted an out till I didn't have the energy to search for it. So do that then. If you don't know what to say or you don't know what to do, get go online and find a grief support group for them that is close by. That is affordable. All right? So... That's it. Um, really, I, I, I always say it's going to be brief, you guys, but <laughs> I don't think, well, I have done some briefly. 
But anyway, the power of community is amazing. So, as I always tell you, on this journey, when it gets heavy, when you can't see to the next hour, definitely when you feel like you can't see to the next day, when all you have a, enough energy for is to just crawl into bed, I get it. Honor your feelings. Forgive yourself. And get yourself some professional help. There's no substitute for it. Other than delaying your joy and your peace. And accelerating your pain and putting your body and those you love um, at risk. Okay? So, as always, I link... Um, some of the resources that I've used, that I continue to use on my grief journey. And of course, um, I put together four different books um, that would greatly help you assist you in this process as well. So please support, you know, um, the book sales and this channel. And you're going to get through this. I guarantee you. Because, like I say. Time does not stop. It's going to keep pushing. It's going to keep going. So what you're feeling right now, although you don't think you're going to get through it right now, in 24 hours, guess what? You got through that moment. So celebrate that. Celebrate. I know, call it a 24-hour win. Heck, sometimes it gets so heavy. Call it a two-hour win. Because you... Two hours ago, you were crying so bad to the corners. Your eyes were puffy. Your eyes were, both your eyes were red. Yeah, I've been there. I've cried so hard. Both my eyes were like, as if blood was in them. I mean, swelling in my eyes so bad, like I had an injury of some sort. But I needed professional assistance. I needed help. Okay. Get the professional help that you deserve. And it's out there for you. All right. But you got to be intentional on it. All right. And when it gets too heavy, pick up that phone or reach out to someone a family member, a trusted friend. Or here in the United States, if it gets too heavy, you pick up that phone, you dial 911. That's what it's for. And they will get you in contact with the right organization, the right. They'll get you the help that you need. And in some municipalities, cities, um, you can use both 911 or 211. Okay? And understand and accept the power of community. And for those that are not on this grief journey but want to know how you can assist someone on this grief journey, listening good. Listen good. The power of community is powerful. Do what you can where you are. That's it. Not out of responsibility, but out of kindness and community. Kindness of community, okay? Cutting somebody grass, trimming their hedges, if you're able to. Sending a wise quote, texting them. You know? Um, sending a gift card to assist them financially. Or paying a bill for them. You know? So, uh, Sending groceries, you know. Um, once again, my friend Luanda, her church, um, or a friend of her, uh, uh, was a, um, I guess, I don't know if she's the first lady or whatever, um, called, and this church was, like, in my community, although it wasn't my church, my, my church, but they came by with, oh, so much food, you guys. 
I mean, totally filled my, um, what do you call it? My deep freezer up. Seriously. And her name, um, was, is Miss Hayes. So thank you, Miss Hayes. <laughs> the power of community, you all. You know? I love you all. And, gee, 40 minutes. Well, hey, that's the power of community. All right. See, so talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. And, whew, I gotta get ready for our throwback Thursday. Woo, woo. Bye.